Welcome to the Empire Builders Podcast, teaching business owners the not-so-secret techniques that took famous businesses from mom-and-pop to major brands. Stephen Semple is a marketing consultant, story collector, and storyteller. I'm Stephen's sidekick and business partner, Dave Young. Before we get into today's episode, a word from our sponsor, which is, well, it's us. But we're highlighting ads we've written and produced for our clients. So here's one of those. Why can't I ever find my people? You can now when you boop. 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 And you'll beep your crew nationwide with Peak Push to Talk. Booping is back. A boop and you're instantly talking to your crew. It's Peak Push to Talk. No more texting. No more it was on silent. No more never return calls. Nope. Just boop. Boop. Push to Talk from PeakPTT.com. Boop. Stephen, my notes say we're going to talk about Wrigley. Yeah, and the interesting thing, we're going to talk about Wrigley not as a multi-billion dollar empire, but what Wrigley did back when they were a little Midwestern $170,000 a year business. They were founded um, in 1891 by William Wrigley Jr. And in 2016, they basically merged with Mars. I mean, at that time, they had $6 billion in revenues and you know about 1,600 employees. But... When we go back, you know, they were a little Midwestern, you know, gum company that wanted to go, wanted to go national. And in fact, one of the things that they, that they did early in their history is they did this little hundred thousand dollar advertising campaign. They wanted, they were, they were in Chicago and they wanted to move into the big market of, of New York. And they did this hundred thousand dollar advertising campaign that totally failed. This is when? This would have been back in the, you know, early, late 1800s, early 19. $100,000, a lot of money. To- it was a lot of money, but the campaign failed. And, and, and part of the reason why they felt it failed was, is they didn't feel like they could get enough attention with that campaign. But here's where things get really interesting. In 1907, there was kind of this little mini market crash and panic happened. And everyone stopped advertising and ad rates dropped. Does this kind of sound familiar at mm. all? See this happen in pandemic. We see this happen in recessions. We see this happen over and over again. But what Wrigley decided to do, this is how bold this guy is. He went out and he borrowed a pile of money. So he borrowed $250,000 to run an advertising campaign. So right when panic is hitting the streets, no one's advertising he said, I'm going to spend $250,000 on this campaign. And he feels that the value that they got was what would be comparable to a million and a half dollars worth of advertising. Okay. Over 250 grand, they got a million and a half dollars worth of advertising. Here's what happened. It worked gangbusters. They went from $170,000 a year business to a $3 million business in three years. So from 1907 to 1910, they went from 170 grand to 3 million in sales. That's like 1,600% growth, 16 times growth in three years. All he had to do was beat the uh, percentage rate he was paying on the loan. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. From that day on, they stayed a national advertiser. And Wrigley was often quoted as saying, you know, the key in advertising is tell them quick, tell them often. So he's a big believer in repetition. Tell them quick and tell them often. It, it, it sounds a lot like the kinds of things that we tell clients yeah. today. Yes. Tell them quick, tell them often. But here's the interesting thing. They didn't just do this trick once. So by 1932, they were doing $12 million a year in profit. In 1932. In profit. That's in not prof- gross. Profit. And they were, they were the largest uh, advertiser in the United States. But the story doesn't end there. The son took over the business, Philip Rickley, and they stayed advertising. And then World War II came along. So they're already pretty big business going to World War II. The war changed everything for everybody. They they, they no longer made gum. They were now making food and things like that for the soldiers. So if you couldn't sell your product. So they couldn't make gum. Couldn't make gum. Couldn't sell gum. What do, what would most people do? And they go, I I can't sell the product. You'd stop advertising. Yeah, or you'd figure out uh, how are we going to advertise canned beans or whatever we're we're making right. now, right? Yeah. So no, they continued to run advertisements through the war because their belief is the war will end, and when mm-hmm. the war, they want to be selling gum again. They had ads running showing empty packets of gum with the ad saying "Remember the wrapper." Mm. So 
They ran ads hearkening back to pre-war times. Wouldn't you like to go back to that time? Remember the, the rapper. When sales started in 1946, they immediately they passed the pre-war numbers immediately. Immediately went past what it was before the war. A significant amounts. So the thing I found interesting about Wrigley is not only did they do the trick once of we're going to advertise when others aren't advertising, and the dad did it, and then the son did it in World War II. And then they went on to become this $6 billion empire. Stay tuned. We're going to wrap up this story and tell you how to apply this lesson to your business right after this. Brought to you by the Least Full of Shit Marketers Association of America. Yes, that's a low bar, but we clear it mightily. We're also the largest pay per performance branding group in North America, and that part's for reals. If you're looking for advertising advice geared towards local owner-operated companies, this is your podcast. And now you can pick the brains of these advertising geniuses over lunch without having to pay for lunch or even leave your office. We're talking 90 minutes of straight answers to all your burning questions about lead generation, customer acquisition, mass media branding, how to get off the paper crack treadmill, anything you want. And the only coin required is candor. Because we can't give no bullshit advice without basing it off no BS data on your company, competitive landscape, operations, and all that jazz. We send you a pre zoom questionnaire. You fill it out candidly, and boom, Bob's your uncle, you're in like Flynn, and we'll be frank as fuck in giving you the straight scoop on all the advertising and business growth questions you always wanted to know, but were too afraid to ask. You'll also get our no pitching and no bitching guarantee. No pitching means we won't pitch you or try to sell you in any way. If you want more after 90 minutes, you'll have to ask. And no bitching means if you don't think the meeting was worth your 90 minutes, we'll send you 100 bucks. Consider it us picking up the tab for lunch and putting our money where our mouth is. Sound like a not-so-full-of-shit offer? Well, that is what we're known for. Take us up on it at empirebuildersprogram.com. Let's pick up our story where we left off, and trust me, you haven't missed a thing. And the dad did it, and then the son did it in World War II, and then they went on to become this $6 billion empire. So in times like this, I mean, is this the lesson? You, you need to think about the fact that, that uh, these weird times are temporary. Yeah, I think, right? I think, there's, I think there's two lessons. One, there, one is that, um, and, and you know, look for the opportunity in the weird times, and the weird times are temporary, but the weird times don't come along every year. Mm -hmm. right? The weird times come every so often, although we're in a historic weird time right now that, that you know, could repeat itself again in six or nine months. But... There's also a lesson for every year. You know, we see this, and Dave, you you see this with 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 your customers in the heating and air conditioning business. You know, how many people in that industry, when they go into the shoulder season, say, "I'm not going to advertise." Yeah, they pull pull in and and uh, well, let's wait for summer. Right, we're going to advertise in the summer. So if Wrigley was looking at that, he'd go, "Well, you know, if people aren't advertising, if my competition's not advertising in January and February, my competition's not advertising during the war." I'm going to advertise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My competition is not advertising in January, February, and March, or September, October. I'm going to advertise. You talk about being able to buy share of voice, right? That's it's one of the ways that you can take your ad budget and stretch it. Is especially if your competitors are not around, you can buy an increased share of voice with maybe the same money that you had been spending all along, as long as you just don't stop. Yeah, and there's been even even. Very recent research that shows that uh, share of market is a uh, lags share of voice. So as you build your share of voice during times when your competitors aren't on or you outspend them in share of voice, your share of market will catch up to that. Yeah. And, and, and for our listeners, share of voice is this idea of how much are how much are you heard versus your competitors. So it's this whole idea that if I have a really loud competitor, it's it's hard for me to be heard. But if everything's quiet, a whisper is even heard. That's the idea of share of voice and share of market is how what's the percentage of the market that you're that you're achieving. So you're absolutely right. Share of voice leads share of market. And and Wrigley really proves this because they had two big opportunities where everything went really quiet. And they went unbelievably loud. Like, think about it. And in the New York one, his first advertising campaign was 100 grand. And then when everybody went quiet, 
he doubled down on it. He said, you know what? This time I'm going to spend $250,000. So he was massively loud um, Mm -hmm. in that market and sales just exploded for them. World War II. Lots of people weren't advertising World War II because there was lots of things not being sold in World War II. Mm -hmm. Couldn't sell his product in World War II. But I'm going to keep talking to people. I'm going to create that demand. I'm going to own that share of voice really for small dollar small dollar amounts. Our customers can do the same things. When times are tough, I get it. It's hard to write those checks. But small checks, when everyone's quiet, buys you a lot of influence in the marketplace. Absolutely. Great lesson. Great lesson. And I think it's important that we remember these stories. You know, uh, we, we tend to think of those businesses like Wrigley's as this, just this giant entity, because that's, what they are today, or that's what they became by the 2000s, right? They were everywhere, but that just wasn't always so. Everybody starts out tiny. Nobody nobody builds a giant business from the get-go. Right, but they become giant by doing something bold, doing something a little bit crazy and out there. And, you know, if you want to build an empire, you got to be a little bit bold. Be a little bit bold. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please share us, subscribe on your favorite podcast app, and leave us a big, fat, juicy five-star rating and review at Apple Podcasts. And if you'd like to schedule your own 90-minute Empire Building session, you can do it at empirebuildingprogram.com. Mm-hmm.